This video will show you how to set up your Model 210 3, 4, and 5 SRA drills correctly every time. Installing the drill bits. Before disassembling or disconnecting parts of the unit, shut off the air supply, disconnect the air hose, and remove pressure from the system by opening the power lever to the on position. Make sure the chuck size of the drill bits match the chuck size of the drill listed on the side of the drill motor. Also be sure you have the correct bit guide bushing to match the bit you will be using. To install the bit, first loosen the swivel bolt until you can swing it out and away from the lower bit guide. You can use the wrench provided on the side of the control panel. Then open the retainer latch on the drill motor. Place the bit into the chuck and close the latch. Place the proper bushing into the bit guide, one half in the upper bit guide and one half in the lower bit guide. Close the bit guide, swing the swivel bolt back into the bit guide, and tighten. Repeat this step for each drill system. You may now have to adjust the return stop rod so that the end clears the bit guide. To do this, loosen the stop rod nuts, move the stop rod where you want it, then retighten the nuts. If you are using a two-piece H-thread bit, you may also have to adjust the guide plates or the guide wheels. Adjusting the height of the drill systems. You can adjust the height of the drill systems by first loosening the two half-inch by four-inch bolts and the two half-inch by one and a half-inch bolts at the base of the mast. Then use a one and three-eighths inch wrench, preferably a socket wrench, to turn either of the nuts at the top of the mast to adjust the height. As soon as you're done, retighten the four bolts at the base. Attaching the hose to the drill unit. First, be sure the drill motor lever is parallel to the drill motor. Rotating the lever will shut off air to the motor. Then, make sure you're using the correct size hose. The 2103 SRA must use a 1.5 inch to 2 inch hose. For the 2104 and 5, you must use a 2 inch hose. Before attaching the hose to the drill, blow air through the hose to clean out any debris that may have accumulated. Connect the hose fittings and install the safety pin. It's also recommended that a whip check be installed as a safety measure. It's important to remember that the air compressor must maintain 120 PSI while all drills are drilling. To adjust the automatic shutoff valves to stop the drills at a desired depth, make sure all other adjustments have been made and the air supply is connected to the drill. Then maneuver the drill to the edge of the concrete slab. To move the drill, release the air brake by switching it to the off position on the control panel. Stand on either side of the machine, push the travel lever to go forward, or pull to go backward. Use the steering wheel to guide the unit. To avoid injury or damage to equipment, if you are towing the air compressor, avoid turning too sharply or turning into the air compressor. Once the drill is in position, unlock the red safety latch on the raise and lower cylinders and all of the individual carriage locks. Be careful not to pinch your hands while doing so. Set the raise and lower valve to the lower position. The drill systems will now drop into the horizontal position. Make sure everyone is clear of the unit during this process. If the guide plates or guide wheels are not touching the surface of the concrete, make sure auto-align is set to up and maneuver the drill until they do. Then place the auto-align switch to the down position. Now move the feed lever to the in position. All drills will move forward until the bits are touching the concrete slab. To make sure the drill distance is correct, measure from the rubber stop pad to the tab on the stop rod. If the distance is not correct, use the provided wrenches to loosen the stop rod nuts. Move the stop rod to reach the correct distance, then retighten the nuts. Repeat this for each drill system. After you drill a set of holes, measure the actual holes drilled to confirm proper drill depth. You may have to make another small adjustment. To level the drill systems, first loosen the two half-inch bolts on the auto-align outside slide. Then turn the nut on the auto-align screw jack assembly until you reach the desired angle, before retightening the two half-inch bolts. Then place the level across the toolbars. This adjustment will be required any time you have been drilling horizontal holes and now want to drill straight vertical holes or vice versa. While adjusting drill spacing, which can be done in the horizontal or vertical position, it's important to remember that, regardless of spacing, you should keep drill systems centered with the mainframe so the entire unit remains balanced. To slide a drill system to reach the drill spacing you want, first loosen the 5 inch frame clamps on each end of the feed bar. Loosen all four half inch lock nuts on each frame clamp until you can slide the feed bar. 
Measure from one side of the feed bar to the same place on the adjacent feed bar to ensure proper spacing. Be sure to measure from both ends of the feed bar to ensure the drill systems are parallel to each other. Retighten all of the frame clamps when finished. To adjust the hole spacing guide, loosen the bolts on the hole spacing guide bracket and slide the guide to where the distance from the red point to the center of the bit is correct. Before taking off the oiler cap to check the oiler, remember to remove pressure from the system by disconnecting the air supply hose and by setting the power lever to the on position. Remove the cap and fill the oil reservoir with proper rock drill oil. This should be done daily. Do not use oil that is too light, such as automatic transmission fluid or air tool oil. Running the oil tank dry can cause damage to drill motors and requires that you bleed any air out of the oiler and oil lines. Before continuing, make sure to put on eye protection, ear protection, and a dust protection mask to protect from flying debris, loud noise, and concrete dust. You are now ready to start drilling. Check your operating manual for information on more technical aspects of the drill or visit the EasyDrill website.